So, Senator McCain, do you agree with what uh, Senator Obama just said? And if you don't, tell him what you disagree with. No, I, look, we've got to fix the system. We've got fundamental problems in the system. And Main Street is paying a penalty for the excesses and greed in Washington, D.C. and uh, in the Wall Street. So there's no doubt that we have a long way to go. And obviously, stricter interpretation and consolidation of the various regulatory agencies that weren't doing their job that has brought on this crisis. But I have a fundamental belief in the goodness and strength of the American worker, and the American worker is the most productive, the most innovative. America is still the greatest producer, exporter, and importer. But we've got to get through these times, but I have a fundamental belief in the United States of America, and I still believe, under the right leadership, our best days are ahead of us. All right, let's go to the next lead question, which is essentially following up on the same subject. And mm -hmm. you get two minutes uh, to begin with, uh, Senator McCain, and you using your word, fundamental. Are there fundamental differences between your approach and Senator Obama's approach to what you would do as president to lead this country out of the financial crisis? Well, the first thing we have to do is get spending under control in Washington. It's completely out of control. It's gone. Uh, it, 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 we have now presided over the largest increase in the size of government since the Great Society. Um, we Republicans came to power to change government, and government changed us. And the, the worst symptom of this disease is what my friend Tom Coburn calls earmarking as a gateway drug, because it's a gateway. It's a gateway to out-of-control spending and corruption. And we have former members of Congress now residing in federal prison because of the evils of this earmarking and pork barrel spending. You know, we spent $3 million to study the DNA of bears in Montana. I don't know if that was a criminal issue or a paternal issue, but the fact is that it was $3 million of our taxpayers' money, and it has got to be brought under control. As President of the United States, I want to assure you, I've got a pen. This one's kind of old. I've got a pen, and I'm going to veto every single spending bill that comes across my desk. I will make them famous that you will know their names. Now, Senator Obama, you wanted to won't know one of the differences. He has asked for $932 million of the earmarked pork barrel spending, nearly a million dollars for every day that he's been in the United States Senate. I suggest that people go up on the website of, Citi of Citizens Against Government Waste, and they'll look at those projects. That kind of thing is not the way to rein in runaway spending in Washington, D.C. That's one of the fundamental differences that Senator Obama and I have. Senator Obama, two minutes. Well, uh, Senator McCain is absolutely right that the earmarks process has been abused, which is why I suspended any request for my home state, whether it was for senior centers or what have you, until we cleaned it up. And he's also right that oftentimes lobbyists and special interests are the ones that are introducing these kinds of requests, although that wasn't the case uh, with me. But let's be clear, uh, earmarks account for $18 billion in last year's budget. Senator McCain is proposing, and this is a fundamental difference between us, uh, $300 billion in tax cuts to some of the wealthiest corporations and individuals in the country, $300 billion. Now, $18 billion uh, is important, $300 billion is really important. And in his tax plan, you would have CEOs of Fortune 500 companies getting an average of $700,000 in reduced taxes while leaving 100 million Americans out. So my attitude is we've got to grow the economy from the bottom up. What I've called for is a tax cut for 95 percent of working families, 95 percent. And that means that the ordinary American out there who's collecting a paycheck every day, they've got a little extra money to be able to buy a computer for their kid to fill up on this gas that is killing them. And over time, that I think is going to be a better recipe for economic growth than the, the policies of, of President Bush that John McCain wants to, wants to follow. 
Senator McCain? Well, again, I don't mean to go back and forth, but uh, he no, that's fine. Senator Obama suspended those requests for pork barrel projects after he was running for President of the United States. He didn't happen to see that light during the first three years as a member of the United States Senate. $932 million in requests. You, Maybe to Senator Obama is not a lot of money. But the point is that, you see, I hear this all the time. It's only $18 billion. Do you know that it's tripled in the last five years? Do you know that it's gone completely out of control to the point where it corrupts people? It corrupts people. That's why we have, as I said, people under federal indictment and charges. It's a system that's got to be cleaned up. I have fought against it my career. I have fought against it. I was called the sheriff by the <laughs> one of the senior members of the Appropriations Committee. I didn't win Miss Congeniality in the United States Senate. Now, Senator Obama didn't mention that along with his tax cuts, he is also proposing some $800 billion in new spendings on new programs. Now, that's a fundamental difference between myself and Senator Obama. I want to cut spending. I want to keep taxes low. The worst thing we could do in this economic climate is to raise people's taxes. I, 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 don't, I don't know where John's getting his figures. Let, let, let's just be clear. Uh, what I do is I close corporate loopholes, stop providing tax cuts to corporations that are shipping jobs overseas so that we're giving tax breaks to companies that are investing here in the United States. I make sure that we have a health care system that uh, allows for everyone to have basic coverage. I think those are pretty important priorities, and I pay for every dime of it. But let's go back to the original point. John, nobody is denying that $18 billion is important. And absolutely, we need earmark reform. And when I'm president, I will go line by line to make sure that we are not spending money unwisely. But the fact is that Eliminating earmarks alone is not a recipe for how we're going to get the middle class back on track. And when you look at your tax policies that are directed primarily at those who are doing well, and you are neglecting people who are really struggling right now, I think that is a continuation of the last eight years, and we can't afford another four. Respond directly to him about that, to, to Senator Obama about that, about the, the, the his, he's made it twice now, about yeah. your tax, your policies about tax cuts. Well, well let, let me give you an example of what Senator Obama finds objectionable. The business tax. Right now, the United States of America business pays the second highest business taxes in the world, 35 percent. Ireland pays 11 percent. Now, if you're a business person and you can locate any place out in the world, then obviously if you go to the country where it's 11 percent tax versus 35, you're going to be able to create jobs, increase your business, make more investment, etc. I want to cut that business tax. I want to cut it so that businesses will remain and in the United States of America and create jobs. But again, I want to return. It's a lot more than $18 billion in pork barrel spending. I can tell you, it's rife. It's throughout. The United States Senate will take up a continuing resolution tomorrow or the next day, some time next week with 2,000, 2,000. Look at them, my friends. Look at them. You'll be appalled. And Senator Obama is a recent convert after requesting $932 million worth of pork barrel spending projects. So the point is, I want people to have tax cuts. I want every family to have a $5,000 refundable tax credit so they can go out and purchase their own health care. Yep. I want to double the dividend from $3,500 to $7,000 for every dependent child in America. I know that the worst thing we could possibly do is to raise taxes on anybody, and a lot of people might be interested in Senator Obama's definition of rich.